Hey YouTube, and a special hello to my family members on my mom's side of the family. Um, first of all, I collect alarm clocks. I'll be doing a video of my collection for you later on. But I'm doing this video now because um, one of my uncles said he wanted to see this clock here. This is a clock that my grandpa modified, which I am calling the Heavily Modified. You shine a little bit of light on the face so you guys can see that hopefully a little bit better up in that really dark spot up there. I know this isn't the best light. Um, I have looked for the clock specifically. I'm always showing on the back and not. I have looked up the clock itself. Um, and I can't find it, okay? I looked up the Deluxe Clock Company. Um, I found similar clocks though. Uh, I'll have to look up that right there. I didn't see that before. But I've looked up, and in the description I have some clocks on a site where these two people, named Melissa and Doug, collect Lux clocks. I have found some clocks that are very similar and were either created first or spin-offs of this one. I'm not sure. I think they were first because I can't find anything for this in the patent pictures on their site and on Google, you know. And but. Clocks I found that are similar, um, one of them, you know, this is the same shape right here, obviously minus the modification, but the same shape here, and it doesn't have, it's not circular here, it's, this follows the same shape, basically, and this right here is to set the alarm, so you point it to the hour you want the alarm to set, with the knob in the back, and, um, that one there is a diamond shape, and so, and and the hands are different too looking and then the other one is much more similar it has um uh, I don't see that well I don't see this little hole right down in there in the bottom there for this to fit in same thing at the top I think grandpa cut that out but it, it, it's a circular shape and this is circular up here but then down here it has what looks like a uh, a temperature uh, thermostat down there, which is um, different. Uh, let's see, and the colors are different too on the casing for these clocks. And but I do not see what that thing there is, so I'm guessing they, that you should be able to figure out that that is a thermostat. So. Anyways, that is that for that part. Um, you know, so I've done research and I can't find anything. I'll save the rest of my talk for after the video. But basically, this is how the clock works. It's a wind-up clock with electronic parts, as you see here, the plug, which gave him three extra options for plugging stuff in. Let's see if I take that off. If it will, a little bit better on there, but it's kind of turning out to be a little bit dark. So, whoops. what you would do, and I've heard mixed things about um, the rest of it, because I think it's missing parts. Obviously, it's missing two hands, and the cover glass, there used to be, I got this from my Aunt Mary, because no one else in the family really wanted it, so they just gave it to her um, at the end of divvying things out. But it had a piece of glass that was cut across there for the cover glass, and... I said that's dangerous, so I smacked it out carefully, not to damage anything else. And I thought this had to come off to take the back off, but that's not true. So I'm now missing a screw up there. I feel, I feel kind of sad about that. And I'm missing the screw. I, I take this seriously, guys. You will really see it when I collect, uh, when in my other collection video. But so basically, what you do is you plug it in and make sure the clock is wound. And then you've got two rows of 12 switches for AM and PM. And so, go ahead and flip these all for a later part. You have your on and off. So they all flipped on now. And so then what you do is you would pick a time. And then that would set some kind of alarm to go off. And so, uh, one of my uncles said that um, it... You had, could plug something else into the clock, and it would, because of this modification, it would make it ring. So I'm wondering if that something else went on here, 
because there's no other indication of where that is. And I'm not sure. But that, that, that is possible, though, for this and to have it. And then I'll get... Um, that's basically what you would do. And because the clock itself still has its alarm working and the alarm hasn't been modified in such a way that it has to be with these right here to work. So, um, that's it for the front of the clock. And um, this, this thing right here, where they have this separate little dial for setting the alarm, instead of having another hand across here in addition with the second hand, is something different that I haven't, that I haven't seen before. Um, only in Lux Clocks have I seen it, and I only discovered a Lux Clock company because of Grandpa's clock, the heavily modified. Now, oh, the other thing missing on the front here is the screw-on for this knob here, which I'll show you on the back. Um, see if I can get some light back here for us. On this knob right here. So, let's see if you guys can see that. Hands are kind of in the way, but... Well, you'll see it different here. So, if you can see this thing... Ah, there we go. Well, anyways, that... That thing right there that I'm touching on the back, it will screw down. So the front is just missing that plus and on off switch. And this one was made kind of to go more to the side. So on the back of the clock here, which we, we will take a look at the innards of this thing, this beauty, we have the alarm on and off. We've got twist knob for the hand, which will show the hand turning. We've got a crank for the time. These parts right here, I'm not sure what they were. And then this adjusts the alarm hand, and that's basically it. Here's where the electricity goes in, and then, I'm not sure if this was a wind right here. No, sorry, that's not a wind. Then we got S and F. Let's see if I can get it to focus in on those S and F. Shine this down on there. So we got S and F, and... Um, there's no dial missing from there, as far as I know. There could be, but basically, I think you just stick something in there, like a little pen, and change it from slow to fast, if it's running slow or fast. Well, let's take one more look at the front. But as you can see here, the hand still turns, it's a bit stiff. And then, let me see if I can tilt this up a bit, so that we look at the clock. Top, and then whoops, sorry. I have to get this to be the right tightness on there so that I can turn the top. So let's see if this will work here. The back it says caution always turn sensors to the right. You can see there the alarm works. Um, probably sounded better at one time. But this will give me an opportunity to show you the uh, alarm switch. Oops. Make sure the casing's input doesn't bump it. So now we'll take a look at um, the innards of this clock. And um, the wiring and stuff here, we'll look at the top first, and then I'll show the wiring on the bottom and how it relates to the front, which had something to do with that. Okay. And if you see here, um, let's see if we can get this. So, turning the time knob, we'll get it in the right position for this. And then if I turn it a little ways away, it will be out. Um, well, maybe not this time. Okay, I'm just going to have to turn the knob for... Um, change this right here so it's in... See what you're turning on front. Okay, there we go. Now we don't have the alarm ringing. But, I've been able to figure out how this clock works. I've never never really studied the insides of clocks. 
I mainly focused on the outside aesthetics of it, but I do need to study the inside if I want my clocks to be working here. Now, um, first of all, we're going to talk about the main gear system and the alarm, but I'm just showing this on the alarm. If you see right there how that thing has this little um, tooth right there and then the second set of teeth. So if I um, loosen this just a bit, it's a little bit too loose. But when I crank it up, as you'll see, you'll see how that kind of acts there. And it's the same thing for the other crank. But, let's see if I can, sorry. You see down there, this twists up. And that tooth allows it to go separately. But when the alarm is ringing, that tooth gets stuck. So it doesn't just allow the wind to free spin. And the thing interesting I noticed too, when I have this open here, that thing will get unwound enough that you can't fit it in the case and you have to wind it up again. Okay, we wound you up enough. So... Um, I'm going to pause here. All right. The program would save to video. So, anyways, then let me take this plate off here and focusing on the clock and then the modifications. So, keeping that in mind, we have the same system down here for the wind of um the main portion of the clock, and the mechanism still does kind of run, sort of. Um, so we just grab a mini screwdriver here, so I can type, and I will show you. So, I'm, what I'm going to do is I need to pull this out a bit and hold it up so that nothing is touching. Then I'm going to stick the screwdriver in so I can bend this out carefully. And I am being careful about this. Let me make sure that this is unstuck down here. Make sure we can't have the bottom touching anything. So as you can see that's moving, I'll just stop it. And then put this right in there and earlier it was working. There we go. So as I'm turning this Oops, sorry. It turns the whole system. And so it sort of works, but then it stops. And, uh, I can't just take this out of the back because of the wires back there. But let's see. So, and then I did a little test to see if there was any way I could get this working, and I think this clock has seen its last wind, sadly, which makes me sad, but we'll go, um, so, stop that for a second, I'm going to put it on fast, and then I'm going to hold this going for 10 seconds and then count the seconds that it stays going afterwards, so, come on, one, two, three, four, five, oops, I slipped, I'm trying to hold this so that I'm not getting any guys' view, but, okay, stop that mechanism, here we go, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That went about fourteen seconds. Then we'll turn this over all the way to slow and do it. So okay, I got that little part unstuck. I had the Slow fast thing turned a bit too far towards the, um, we are on the 
There's no side now. So we'll do that little test again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. So as you see here, it went shorter on the leftover energy than it did last time. We got to 6 seconds, last time we got to 14 seconds. But it just goes for a bit and then stops, so it's not working here. Um, but basically, so you have this, let me pull you out like this. So this big gear, if you guys might be able to see in there, turns that gear in the bottom that's connected to the same shaft that has the, um, turns the knob, but it doesn't turn at the same time. And, and so it will turn the hand, and that is then, that big gear then comes and turns the little gear on the top, which turns this gear up here, which then turns this gear, which turns the mechanism on the bottom. It gives you that nice ticking sound. If you guys can hear that. Very nice. And then the way the alarm uh, works is we have, let me see if you can see that little tooth on the right, triangle thing. That tooth sticks out and blocks down this piece up here. This piece, I mean, if you're going backwards, it blocks this piece, which makes it ring because it goes down in there and hits again the um thing and then so it hits against down there and it makes it so that um it will smash against there and ring and that's basically it for the clock part I was able just to look at it and see this is how it works now for the multiplied part that my grandpa did so Modified, put on the electronic parts, and um, I might do more tests on this to see if I can get it working. Um, I'll plug something else into the plug and test all the switches. But he's got this switch here, which I believe lets you turn the alarm on and off. And then, now he's done something interesting on the back here because you can see here, so here's where the power comes into the plug, from the plug. So one part goes around here, and it plugs up there, and it hooks into the one part of the circuit there, and then of course that other part has another part that runs off from the switch there, and goes on to the rest of the circuitry. And then the other part here comes from the switch, and then started directly onto the back of the clock. And same thing over here. So it will connect the circuit across the whole metal here. Now, I'm wondering what the purpose of that is, what purpose does it serve? And I thought that maybe it connected to something else on the clock. So, I tried and matched up the back here. Because I was thinking that these points here touched to these points here, which then touched to the circle in the front, which is part of the electronic circuit. But this one is too low for this point up here. So, basically that was out. I, I still have no idea why he did that, if any of you guys know. That would be really great to know for the history of this clock, or this clock. Um, but that's how it's connected on the one part of the circuit there. And then he's got all the wiring. Let's take a look at the underneath here. Oh, we have the clock tilted up a bit and it's ticking a bit. We'll see if that continues on. If it does, I'll be so happy. But underneath here, there's the wiring for all the switches. Every single wire, as you can see, is red. My grandpa was very, very, very meticulous. So my mom said. Because I only knew him when I was pretty young. And... But he's got circuits wired up here and stuff. And I have a multi-tester here. A multi-meter, I should say. That I can test stuff with. And so I've tested it, and I know that these circuits um, work. Just a multi-tester. I want to say a very special thanks to um, my friend 
Thank you for having this fix of my but for also getting this to me for free. But, let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah. And, uh, all the switches are on. So, anyways, the circuits work. Okay. Don't need to take the multi-tester's word for it. Because for some reason it isn't. Yeah. I don't know why, so we'll just go on with it. But I've tested things, and um, there's one spot where I do need to get it to work. So, cross your fingers, it does. But those, then, those wires there, um, they come up, and they go through all the wiring, and they end up on the front of the clock, on the outer part of the ring, is where the electronic circuit connects up. So, let me see if I can find that. The clock in view. I need to show you the, the multi-tester, multi-meter here. So you should see the number change if I do this right. And I'm going to touch this to one of the bumps on up here. Um. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not. Oh, okay, oh, I'm going to play around with this at the end, and if I get it working, take a shot. But I forget exactly what I touched that got this to work, but this does work. So anyways, the front part is connected to the electronic circuits on the um, bottom of the clock, and so when a hand comes around and then touches um, one of these points here, I think, because this, oh, I'm not exactly sure, because this is the wrong hand, and so I'm not sure what touched that completed the circuit. You might have had some other extra hand on there or something I'm not sure about, but it is, yeah, I, I can't figure that out, but he obviously had some other way of modifying, whoops, sorry. Really modifying the top up here for that to work so that it would touch and complete the circuit somehow. But we go back to the back. Um, I, I was looking around in here and I didn't see anything that connected up the um, connected an electronic portion to the hand at all. And, um, other things too, I've put back into place. Um, in there that thing was out, the, the pin, the other side of the axle for the wind-up part of the, the main portion of the clock. But I was able to get that back into its proper hole. And, so I got this clock in as good a condition as it's going to be. And, but, that's basically it, and, um, for how this portion of the clock works, and, at first, I thought this just gave you an extension for other devices, but I'm thinking now it has something related to the circuit, so when the circuit is completed, it will turn it on, because I've seen other things like that, but specifically with the plug here, because I saw a clock, uh, you know, kitchen timer by the Lux Clock Company. You plug it into the wall, and then you plug something into it, and then it will break the circuit when it is that way. And so, um, that is basically it for the clock. Okay, sorry about that. So now, I'm going to be on Zoom my talk for last. I only have a few things to say. Um, you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy my alarm clock video, but as far as research goes, trust me, I have I have searched this out because I know I know quite a bit about clocks. I've read like the history of clocks and stuff, things like really, really old alarm clock was a candle clock where you stick a nail in at the desired time, and then when it melts down a nail will fall and you'll hear it. So but I know I've done I know I've done 
quite a bit of research. Um, I'm going to contact Melissa and Doug, the people that own that clock site, and I'll be sending them this video to so they can see it and see if they know anything about this here. Links in the description for the um, for the other clocks and stuff, but I know research about the clocks. So I've done plenty because I've even I've even been on eBay before and I've just scrolled down the alarm clock section and dreamed about all the old clocks because although I do like new clocks though I I do prefer old clocks. And but that is it for my grandpa's clock. The heavily modified. Um actually I guess the last thing the last thing Cord, as you can see, like, right here, as you can see, it's been, it's eaten up, and the cord is in bad shape, so if I do plug this in to see if this portion still works or not, I will be, um, very careful. I did, when I first got it, I thought that it was going to be electric, and the wind was, um, just still there, because he couldn't take off the wind, and... But I freely plugged it in, and I didn't get shocked though, so I should be pretty safe if I do any more tests on this. But if you guys, family knows anything about this clock that they haven't told me yet, I'd love to know it. If other people, non-family, know anything about this clock that um, I don't know, that would be great to you know if there's any way to get it working or anything. But yeah, that is it for my grandfather's clock, the heavily modified.